Coming to you live from Music City, USA, it's the Nashville Casting Couch. I'm Chris Burks, along with your locally famous host, TJ Cates, who is in the invitation-only studio high atop the city overlooking everything that is Nashville Entertainment. Now lay back and enjoy the ride that we call the Nashville Casting Couch. Camera rolling. Nobody's talking, man. Okay. Wait, they weren't talking a second. Okay. This is TJ Cates with another episode of the Nashville Casting Couch. We have Stephen Harmon on the chair. Woo! You're so famous that everybody would just clap like a whole bunch right now. They made me feel famous. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been up to? Now you're a still photographer, but you're a cinematographer, a documentary filmmaker. Right. So I, I started as a still photographer, a photojournalist mm -hmm. um, for the Tennessean about... 12 years ago and left there in September but about halfway through my time there six years ago I started in video full-time and did a lot of news stories and got interested and then I started going and doing short documentaries now what do you consider a short documentary what's that about well well documentary that's you know Not less than 10 late. minutes okay. really it's just a matter of how long it is um, do you put them in film festivals or anything or um, you know, we've entered them in some contests and it's done, you know, they've done decent. Um, mostly it's for, it's just, just, you know, people who would normally read the paper and now it's online. It's all, it all goes online. So you usually, do web video content for any news? I did. Yeah. I did. I did yeah. a lot of that uh, for did them. You, and, did and you get I, into that with Tennessean? Yes, right? absolutely. Um, kind of, I was kind of the main video guy for, the, for a while there and now they, they, now everyone does video. So it's, you know, that's just kind of how. How it goes. Well, I guess, and I think maybe when fast internet kind of hit everybody, yeah, that's whenever video true. started hitting. Exactly. Remember the pictures you would take, and it took forever to load, and it's kind of a joke, but it's it happened, yeah. and it was technology at the time, and and we talked earlier about your your things, the way that you shoot. People's attention spans a little shorter now. They want to see a video pretty quick. I mean, if you shoot something on the street, news channels will pop it up, and they'll even pop up people that don't work for the news channel right now. The the, the way they produce video. It, has evolved quite a bit and just figuring out what people are going to watch mm -hmm. and it's so true it's got to be two minutes or less or it's just not going to get watched and so that's what it, we did a lot is you know produce a lot of quick hit um kind of the video version of fish wrap it's you know got a short shelf life fish wrap you're talking about the newspaper the newspaper yeah it's it's I'm to read it. day. yesterday yeah yeah so um that's why I, i'm I branched out into sh into short documentary films because it, it's more substantive subject matter. You know, we did stuff about like concussions, which is still a hot topic. Um, did you know longer pieces about um, you know crime and things like that? We did we did a series of videos. We did a, a piece about um, gangs about five six years ago, and then of course the floods. Um, yeah. I was part of all that coverage. We should have done one about the ice storm. I know, right? We almost yeah. didn't have the show today because of this ice storm. I know. That so, will not go away. Yeah. So now that I'm not at the Tennessean anymore, I'm, I'm doing more things that, that interest me personally. Um, moved to Nashville originally to work with musicians, and that's what I'm doing. And I also do a well, lot Well, you're of, in Music City. Exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's it's been great. It's been yeah. really great. Good for you, man. Yeah. So um, what did you take away from the Tennessean? Because I used to work for a little show called TMZ. And I wasn't a big fan of working for them. And I, they offered me a loan contract, and I turned it down. But it was still Warner Brothers, which was a good end. And I learned, anytime you do something, you learn. So the thing that I learned from them, short videos, pertinent videos, whatever you shoot today, you share today, or throw it in the garbage. I, I got to tell you, anything and everything I've learned about video and production, I learned there. So I have to give them credit for that. It's, it's really, you know, it was just totally on the job, mm -hmm. um, figuring out how things work. And so... You know, it, it's been a great learning experience, and now I'm taking that and kind of doing my own thing. What do you think, and this might be a touchy subject, I don't know, but what do you think about the people around the world that are not doing such great things, and we're, we're actually seeing things that we really maybe shouldn't be shared on social media, the ISIS, the things like that? I mean, is that almost considered documentary? Are we giving them too much to be able to play? Or, I mean, and people well, are, it's almost like people are numb, this generation. They're seeing things that as kids we just didn't see. That's absolutely true. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of censorship. I think you know if it's it, it should be put out there, but uh, that doesn't mean people have to watch it. You know, yeah. I, you know, I. 
all those ISIS videos, I have not watched a single one. I just you because I, I, you know, I've seen a lot of things that you, you can't unsee, uh, and yeah. and I don't want to see that. Your background, I have a I have something really because I think you'll have a good answer for this. What do you think about Facebook coming up with some kind of warning like before? It's almost like if you go, you take your kids to the movies. There's a Disney movie. There's a you're looking at a movie poster. I don't know what this is about. And there's a rating. I almost would like to see them because there's older people that are sensitive. There's younger people. There's people can make more. What do you think about Facebook coming up with some kind of censorship before you actually see? Because some of the pictures are even graphic that they'll share. Well, I think if people you are get that censorship, this is touchy. Yeah. Well, I if they don't. If they don't cut the content, I mean, I, I don't think there should be violence and, and all that on Facebook. Involuntary. There's a place for those things, you know. You want to see a cat video, and then where did this come from? Right. So yeah, exactly. It's the it's the what you would expect to see on social certain social media. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook has has one level, and then you you would Twitter's actually got it a little bit more open. Yeah, you can see you can see a little more on Twitter, and I think uh, for me personally, I, I go to Twitter for a lot of my news now. You do? Um, sure. And, and just because I know it's going to be straight from the source. It is. Yeah. And it's different. We shared a video last week that somebody had cussed in a little bit. It was a rock star, 30 year rock star. And yeah. it's like, do I leave it in there? YouTube doesn't care of that. And, and you kind of wonder. I said, well, you know what? He did it. And it yeah. said, and what he was talking about was a topic on um, Pandora and Spotify where they don't pay the writers, but they want anybody to go to their site, but they charge and they sell advertising. Um, so it's I, I think censorship. It's Online, I think it, pretty much almost anything goes, mm -hmm. and, and people would kind of expect that. If you believe it, it's kind of a, almost an insult. But Yeah, um, I didn't believe it. it good. <laughs> we, we have our intro music. That we have a rock girl out of Pittsburgh. It's Amy Jane Wheeler, and it's on every one of my sing songs. And if somebody says something really bad, we'll pop it in there. Just woo. Radio edit. Yeah, a little bit of radio edit. It's kind of fun. All right, tell me this. This is a question because you know about this. The difference between your videos, YouTube versus Vimeo, less views on Vimeo, but there's a little bit higher standard as far as your but credibility if you're posting on Vimeo, which you have. We're going to put his link on Vimeo up for everybody to see. Well, the, I I think that the Vimeo is for people who appreciate film uh -huh. uh, and and cinema and and you know a higher end production. Um, that's not to say that it doesn't appear on YouTube, but it's harder to find it. There's so much more. And yet you have to kind of wade through the cat videos to mm -hmm. get to the good stuff. Uh, you know, sometimes we come home at three in the morning. We watch a lot of cat videos. Sometimes cat videos. They're are not a good as funny antidote. at seven at night as they are at three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that's about. probably true. Yeah. Okay. So. But yeah, I, I I appreciate both places. Um, I have a Vimeo site because um, I just prefer it. I, mm -hmm. I, I like the format a little better. Um, yeah. But. Plenty of my videos are on YouTube as well. Yeah, yeah, just a lot of lot of stuff from my old stuff from the Tennesseans on there. I, I met Jonathan Kane at Cracker was at Cheesecake Factory in Green Hills one night. He's a keyboard player for Journey, and I know that they found their new singer that replaced Steve uh, Perry on YouTube. They started searching tribute bands. I saw that and documentary. And that I told him what voice. I did. I told him I, said, I saw the documentary. That's so cool the idea. They said, what do you do? I said, well, I came to town a year ago to be a filmmaker because that's what I did in Memphis. And now I'm doing this. And I like this better, actually. But um, he said, put everything that you own on YouTube. I don't care what it is. Put it up there. Somebody's going to find you. And I've had three networks that contacted me to do production here from YouTube. That's so, probably true. But YouTube and Jimmy are two different things. They are. And you never know who's looking. Exactly. Yeah. We assume everybody loves us. Well, yeah, keep keep making good stuff like this. It's Really? Yeah. We're going to end with compliment. <laughs> is there anything else you want to cover? I don't think so. I don't have any particular projects right now. Uh, I've, I've kind of, you know, I'm still kind of in that transition time, mm -hmm. but um, it's, you know, it's new and exciting stuff. I'm, you know, bigger and better things going on. Do you have like a highlight reel? No, just a lot of material. I mean, okay. there's so much. Tell us which one you want us to share, because right after we find out, we find out the black, we're going to show your best video. You know, there, there's a there's a, a mini doc I did uh, a few years ago with Peter Cooper at the Tennessean. He's okay. with the Country Music Hall of Fame now. Meredith Curtis is writing this down. We scene. did uh, we did a documentary. Uh, we interviewed uh, Eddie Stubbs from WSM. Yeah. And I really had a blast. Okay. He's such a cool guy, and I, I really am proud of that. And I'd love to, you know, show that again. We're going to. Yeah. A lot of people are going to yeah. see it. Not it that they didn't before. Well, We're I in know, charge but, of the internet. We're just really good at manipulating it. Yeah. But uh, I really, I really loved uh, working on that. And um, so, yeah, if you could show that a little bit, that would be nice. We'll do it right now.
And that was Buck Owens tonight here on 650 AM WSM along with Don Rich and Crying Time. I'm Eddie Stubbs. It's Wednesday night, way back Wednesday. One of the things that was the hallmark of country radio years ago. For me, it's always been about the music. It's not been about me and what I do. There's only three people on in this town at night that are live on the radio. Everybody else is voice tracked. And uh, to have a job on the radio being live is, is a phenomenal blessing. But I guess I've earned their, their trust over the years. That's the only way I can put it. And uh, they let me break a lot of rules. And if you listen to the radio, you might hear Lady Annabellum or Kenny Chesney. But you're going to hear Ernest Tubb every night and you're going to hear Kitty Wells and Lester Flight and Earl Scruggs every night. And the magic is to try and weave it all together to make it listenable and to set it up. Great show in store for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, here are our first stars of the evening with Sounds of the Old West. Would you please make welcome the fabulous Riders in the Sky. I think that people are starved for substance. I really believe that. And music speaks to everyone differently. And if you play good music, it will speak for itself and people will ask for it again. Believe it or not, I've been here one week and was hired to work part-time at WSM to do mainly historical research, work as a part-time on-air broadcaster. I hate to say this, I think Eddie probably knows more about us than we do, you know. <laughs> but he's a great guy, I've known Eddie a long time, and he's playing fiddle with the Johnson Mountain Boys. I played my first job with the Johnson Mountain Boys a week before my 17th birthday. So I was there for a total of 18 years. If it wasn't for Marty Stewart, I probably wouldn't play at all. Uh, being the announcer on his TV show, he gets me to come out and play a fiddle tune or two per season, and that's, that's about it. See, we can look eye to eye right there. We're real big fans. We love bluegrass, and so we listen to bluegrass a lot. We listen to him. We've uh, seen our uh, his videos on YouTube with uh, the Johnson Mount Boys. Great announcing voice. Uh, it's just perfect. Summer before I went into my senior year of high school and sat out in the audience out at the Grand Ole Opry House, and I said, I want to be on that stage one day. But I had no earthly idea at that time that it would be in an announcer's role at the Opry or to be on WSM working weeknights. You can't hide the truth, and truth in music speaks to people, whether it's decades old or whether it was made last week. Listen to the bacon frying. Isn't that wonderful? That's Grandpa and Ramona Jones tonight here on 650 AM WSM and Dark as a Dungeon here on Way Back Wednesday. Let's go. He ain't got your swagger. No, he ain't got that little clip in his chin. He ain't no way better. Cause you're the baddest country boy. Sweet as sin. He ain't got my soft lips on him every morning anymore. 